ASAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. New this noon, a man convicted in a gruesome murder just moments ago finding out his fate. Per a plea deal, Justin Hunt being sentenced to 34 years in prison. All this comes after police started investigating in back in November of 2022, and that's when officers found Matthew Pacheco McKinney's body in Live Oak on O'Connor Road, not far from I-35. Police found the 31 year old covered in a blanket and curtain material. He had a rope wrapped around his midsection. Authorities charged Justin Hunt with his murder after weeks of investigating. Police say that Hunt shot the victim who was then tortured before he died. All this following an argument. Coming up on the News at 5, Eric Hernandez inside the courtroom as the sentence is handed down. And we're also going to get reaction from his family. A trial underway for a man accused of killing another man during an argument nearly three years ago here in San Antonio. Tavares Anderson charged with murder after police say he shot and killed Malcolm Everett back in July of 2021. It happened in an apartment complex on the northwest side. Anderson's attorney argued the killing was in self-defense. The trial is expected to last till the end of the week. If found guilty, he faces up to life in prison. Today, a U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals will again consider whether a Texas immigration law is constitutional. The law, SB 4, lets state officials arrest and detain people they suspect of entering the country illegally. The fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans blocked it. In order to consider that constitutionality issue, arguments going on today. Legal experts believe this Texas case could eventually give the U.S. Supreme Court an opportunity to take another look at the federal government's long-held control over immigration policy. Outside with live cam, already feel some changes out there. A little sticky in places, but it's not cloudy. No, we still got clear skies. It's going to be a nice couple of days, guys, until we get into the weekend, and that's when humidity really starts to come back in, and you'll start to feel it a little bit more. Now, the one downside, as we've been saying the last couple of days, is oak pollen. Man, it has been so bad, and today's count is very high, 25,170. This is actually up from yesterday, if you can imagine that. Uh, molds are low, pecan is low, but oak is the real issue, and it, uh, we're, we're right into the peak of the season. So hopefully we're, we're topping out. These are our highest numbers, and we'll start to go back down here next couple of weeks. We're going to see a big swing in temperatures today. If you were out and about this morning, it was chilly. 45 is where we started. It was jacket weather, and now we're up uh, into the 70s, and we'll be up close to 80 this afternoon. So that'll be a 35-degree swing in temperatures. Uh, we'll see another big swing like that coming up tomorrow. Uh, here's a look at uh, the time lapse, and boy, it is, it's been beautiful. We started off with clear skies, and we're going to end up that way. No clouds in the sky today, but we're going to take a closer look at the cloud coverage for the eclipse. Still some changes going on there. We're going to break it all down for you and talk about some rain chances over the weekend, what you need to plan for Saturday into Sunday. That's coming up here in just a couple minutes. All right, Justin, look forward to that. Thank you. Hey, heads up for you this noon, especially if you're headed over to the grocery store. A staple could be getting more expensive. That's because the nation's largest producer and distributor of fresh eggs experiencing a bird flu outbreak. Cal Maine Foods has temporarily stopped production at a facility here in Texas. The state agricultural commissioner says the company has to depopulate 1.6 million laying hens and 337,000 pullets. Those are hens less than a year old. Cal Maine says it is working to secure production at other plants to minimize disruption to its customers. Officials say the current risk to the public, minimal. Bird flu has also been detected at a poultry facility in Michigan. A neighborhood in Schertz facing some growing pains. Last night, the city council there heard a request to change the zoning for a currently empty plot of land so that a developer can start building home rentals. The 43 acres is on Savannah Drive between FM 1518 and Schertz Parkway. Homeowners around the area have collected 500 signatures against that request because they say that they worry there's too many homes going to be created and that's going to create traffic problems in the area. Following a vote late last night, the Schertz City Council ultimately voted and denied the request. Traffic is our big issue because all the traffic will come in and out of right here, dump onto Savannah. We just can't handle it. With the city council vote, the proposal dies. The developer looking to build nearly 300 single-family detached rentals, but now cannot. 
April is National Donate Life Month. That is a time to bring awareness to the importance of registering to become an organ, tissue, and eye donor. Making that decision is an important and personal one, and that's why we held a phone bank this morning with the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance. Throughout the morning, we had experts speak about the importance of organ donation, becoming a living donor, and how it donating works and the benefits of a donation. More than 100,000 people nationwide are waiting for a life-saving organ transplant, and about 10,000 are here in Texas. University Health has several programs changing people's lives. University Health has several interesting programs. Um, we have our kidney transplant program, and we have our liver transplant program as well as a very robust lung transplant program. Our living donor liver program is one of the largest in the nation, and that's where a living donor donates part of their liver to a loved one or a friend. Um, it's a very complex operation. Only a few programs in the country are performing these. I always think about Sean Elliott getting a donated kidney from his brother. If you would like to learn more and be added to the Donate Life Texas Donut Registry, scan this QR code and you'll find out some more information there for you. For the very first time in a period in our in humanity, we are finally at a point where we can answer the question, are we alone? In Ooh, that's always a good question. That's NASA scientist Julie Crook. She has decades of experience. She's trying to tackle that age old question. Is there other life in the universe? And now her research will bring her here. She is going to be one of the people gathering important data during next Monday's total solar eclipse. And Crook will be uh, teaming up with a UTSA professor to share their love for space. With the next generation of scientists, we're going to have more about her story. It's coming up tomorrow morning on GMSA. And you can see the countdown continues. It's a sight Texas haven't seen in 600 years. Monday's Tolar Solar Eclipse will be the first one over San Antonio since 1397. 1397. Yeah. Imagine that. And some of the best views on the planet are going to be right here in our area. That's why we are are geeking out. We can't stop talking about this historic event. So you need to be sure to tune in next Monday from noon to two. We're going to be live all over the place, including Fredericksburg, Bernie, Leon Springs and Northwest San Antonio. We're also going to have a look at all the action that is happening in Kerrville. Ursula and I are going to be right here as the event unfolds. And our meteorologists are going to be live in the field as part of our big time team coverage. Meantime, tonight, we're going to give you a sneak peek at some of this stuff. The special eclipse centered KSAT explains. And then right after that, you can join our KSAT weather team for a live stream starting at 7 o'clock tonight. Justin, you've been working on all this. You can watch it on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, the KSAT YouTube page. Scan the QR code there to submit your questions. I know a lot of questions have been asked of these meteorologists over the last several days, and they've been trying to get to all of them. People got a lot, a lot of questions about what's going to happen on Monday. Hey, what happened last night? We're going to talk about that. Wimby almost pulled off at a historic night on the court, taking on the Nuggets. We got highlights on the way. It's National Autism Awareness Month, and coming up, we're going to show you how organizations are working together to get the services to families who need them for their children. I think where families very much struggle is finding access to those therapies, finding even access to evaluations. It is probably the only medical diagnosis that is out there that takes three years to actually diagnose with such long wait lists. It is an uphill climb for families trying to get a diagnosis and treatment for autism. It can take years to get in to see a doctor, and that delay can lead to a delay in nipping the effects of autism on time. It's National Autism Awareness Month here in April, and Tiffany Huertas opens the door to how, why, and how soon autism specialists say they can intervene if parents are alert to the problem. Even as a pediatrician, we are... We are facing this mountain of, of just 
obstacles for these families from just trying to get a diagnosis, which can be up to three years of a wait list, and then being on another wait list to get therapies. But a virtual clinic is helping reduce wait times for autism evaluations nationwide. As You Are is a virtual clinic uh, that we do autism evaluations. Uh, everything is done via telehealth, and we will assess each child from 16 months to 10 years old for uh, signs of autism. Pediatrician Tracy Burton is the assistant medical director at As You Are. She says early intervention is key. So much data has come out that uh, starting therapies early and starting any sort of early intervention really can help the child learn how to manage their um, symptoms and, and help with family life um, and school functioning. The CDC says about one in 36 children has been identified with autism spectrum disorder. Burton shares some signs of autism. If your child is not responding to their name, they're not making great eye contact. Um, they they haven't developed a lot of speech um, by a certain age. Those are those are pretty big red flags. And and other red flags are do they have really particular sensory things. Are they picky eaters? Do they echo with what you say all the time or make certain repetitive sounds? As You Are works closely with the nonprofit Any Baby Can of San Antonio that has an autism services program designed for families raising a child diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Uh, we would tell them that Any Baby Can really could provide great services like parent training classes for uh, to guide them through the next part of this journey. Autism services that any baby can include parent training to support groups. Burton says these are helpful for parenting resources. Any resource that they can um, receive like from any baby can is so helpful. Burton says these are helpful parenting resources. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Once again, outside with live cam, got in the truck this morning to come to work. A little crisp outside is nice. Yes, it was a little chilly in the 50s, 60s? 40s. 40s, Ooh, oh. Yeah, 45 this morning in San Oh, man, it's what? winter for y'all. You okay? You guys okay? You yeah. too? Everything all right? Well, I have frostbite. <laughs> I'm okay. Excuse me. I might, I might have had a coat on, honestly. <laughs> uh, for at least a little off. Uh, the aquifer is down four tenths of a foot to 638.8 in your pollen count. Uh, we just showed this to you, but it's worth showing again. Oak is very high at 25,017. Come on. Uh, molds are low, pecan is low. Uh, weekend, rain chances. Saturday night and the Sunday, we're going to time that out, talk about it, plus the eclipse. What's the latest? We got some new data, and we're going to share it with you coming up. Welcome back. Time now to head over to Market Square and SA Live. Good afternoon. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, I mean, we're counting down to it. Yes. Okay. We're counting down to the eclipse. So we want to know where will you watch the eclipse? We yeah. know. We yeah. know where we will be. We are going to be over there at the Rock at uh, right near La Cantera. Mm -hmm. A bunch of folks from uh, UTSA. We've got, you know, we're going to be streaming the whole thing. Also, so scan that QR code, by the way. And I know you two are going to be right where you are right there because we yep. got that special <laughs> coming up also. And this is our chance. I know Justin's been talking about this too, but to promote, don't forget a glasses giveaway mm -hmm. with Sarah and Mia tonight. And then we've got that uh, streaming conversation with all of uh, the five of us. Later on this evening, starting wow, at 7 o'clock. all in one place. All in one place. That's, that's amazing. It just goes to prove that Justin and I are not the same, <laughs> same person. person. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I never had heard that before, yeah. but okay. <laughs> so y'all are going to be taking right questions at 7 o'clock tonight, huh? We are going to be taking, yes, we're right. going to be answering, answering questions. It's going to be a, a, a Q and A. Why are you going to yeah. call in? Uh, <laughs> Why did you tell me this? <laughs> so Boy, yeah, I we want to and, and and also kind of raises the the question mm. too. Um, our those of you that aren't in the area of totality, how far would you drive yeah, maybe to, to get there? Or, or are you just going to be like, you know what, good enough for me, yeah. I'll just watch the live stream on KSA. Yeah. So scan that QR code and let us know. You may see your answer on SA Live from Historic Market Square here in a bit. Yes, indeed. All right, seeing a few. Okay, you and I pointed up. We're going to be on the we're roof. Gonna, we're going to be on the roof. Broadcasting all and, the... Uh, and throwing, throwing out to, yeah. what, six... 
crews. We got crews all over, all over the place. The place. So. so, and we'll be carrying it live right here on KSAT 12. So you'll be able to see it from every angle, which is important yep. because of cloud cover. Yeah, we don't we don't know yet exactly where yeah. clouds are going to end up. So there, there's still a lot of questions, and until we get some of our more high resolution models on that, we'll we'll have some questions. By the way. Mike's hair is a very different color than mine. I've, so. Yeah, it never occurred to me that <laughs> y'all might be mistaken for yeah. that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at uh, oak season. Man, it is hitting us hard. Let's kind of walk you through oak season. You probably already know this if you lived here long enough, but our beautiful live oak trees, they you know, get the beautiful leaves, but once we get into oak season, they start to fall off and then you get the catkins which develop on all the trees. If you look at any oak tree right now, you're going to see these dangling down. That's the pollen producers. That's what gets to us. Uh, those eventually fall, so too do the dead leaves. And then you get the nice piles on the ground uh, that you got to sweep up. Uh, and eventually we get all that pollen to go away, but we got to get through the season first. And uh, right now, I'd say we're pretty close to the peak. It typically peaks early April. This is about where we are. So hopefully we're going to get on the back side of this soon. But today's count, 25,170. I know a lot of people are suffering. Uh, that's where we stand with oak season. And as we go outside for you, 72. What a beautiful afternoon. 35 is the dew point. Westerly winds at 9 miles per hour. That westerly wind will keep that number pretty low. So it is going to be a dry day. Uh, with regards to humidity. 77 Bernie, 77 Canyon Lake, 79 in San Marcos, 76 in Cuero today. I think we'll be somewhere close to 80 here in San Antonio. Pretty similar to yesterday. Shaping up about the same. What about your weekend? Friday, by the way, looks good. But the weekends, things start to change. We get more humidity in here on Saturday. Fog and drizzle to start the day, so it could be a little bit damp. Keep in mind, we have the Valero, Texas open, so that's actually not bad golfing weather. But we also have the air show. That's not great air show weather. Uh, so a lot of different things at play here. We will get more humidity on Saturday, 77. And then once a front comes through Saturday night, we add in some shower and storm chances. Not big chances, and I think the window's pretty small. Uh, but we'll watch for that Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Most of Sunday, though, will be spent with some sun. We'll see it clearing uh, once we get past that morning shower. And then 83 is the forecast high. So that's your weekend. What about Monday? Uh, of course, with the eclipse. So we see humidity. These are dew points, right? Very dry next couple of days. It builds on Friday, and then by Saturday, we get high dew points. Falls off Sunday behind that front, and then boom, humidity comes right back on Monday. That's the problem. With all that humidity, it's going to lead to some clouds. So let's look at the forecast here. Now this is Friday. Not much to see. We've got a low building out west. This low is going to be pretty potent, but it stays to the north. What it does for us is push that front through that we just talked about Saturday into Sunday. There's your thin line of showers and maybe a storm or two. But it's this front that becomes very important on Monday. Where does it end up? So it pulls up stationary. This is Monday morning at 7 o'clock. And then all indications are that it starts to push back to the north as a warm front, bringing moisture back into South Texas, right into the eclipse path. Not great, not ideal. Uh, Question will be, though, how long do those low clouds stick around? Could we see some peaks of sun? We certainly could. Not all hope is lost here. And we think there's about a 60% chance of it being partially blocked, which means you'll still be able to see it. It still gets dark. It's just you'll see it between the clouds. It's kind of maybe a little bit obscured. 40% chance that it's totally blocked. We get these low clouds, but guess what? Still gets dark. Still a cool experience. So as I said, not all hope is lost here. We're pretty confident that we're going to see some clouds. It's just a question of how much and how thick. And we'll certainly continue to update that forecast for you. 85 Thursday, 84 on Friday. We showed you the weekend. There is a chance of rain on Monday, but I think it holds off until the afternoon. And we'll have some storm chances by Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. High school girls softball playoffs in full swing. We've got some highlights for you coming up. And the Devonport girls soccer team continues to be a scoring machine. Spurs in Denver last night to take on the defending NBA champ Denver Nuggets. Spurs winning three out of their last four before last night's game. Victor Wimbayama, one of few stars able to suit up for the Spurs last night. We know Devin Vassell and Jeremy Sohan out for the season, and you can see from the highlights, this turned into a Wimby two-time MVP Nikolai Jokic demonstration. Jokic scored a game-high 42, but Wimby put on an incredible display at both ends of the floor. He had 23 points. He had... 13 rebounds, nine block shots, and eight assists in 34 minutes. So he just missed out on a quadruple double 
would have been the third spur to score one. Remember, David Robinson and Alvin Robertson both have the team's two quads. That's two of the four that have been performed in the NBA. He could have had a fifth. Very close. He's going to get one. The Spurs end up losing to the Nuggets, though, 110 to 105. All right, so here's their next game, like six games left in the regular season. Spurs will be in New Orleans to take on the Pelicans Friday night. All right, let's take it to Diamond Grove Softball. Battle for first place in District 28-6A. The Madison Mavericks hosting the Clark Cougars. Top of the first, base is loaded, two down. Addison Castilla. Boom. That's the right center. Sasha Coleman is going to score from third, but here comes Jacqueline Espinosa. Here comes the throw, and no, he didn't even slide. Just out. one nothing. Clark, bottom of the first. Same score. Runner on third. Madison J. Earl chops one to third. Throw to first is too low. And a run scores. Tie this one up. Runs up on second base, and the Madison Mavs end up taking over first place because they get the final 9-2. All right, let's take it to Piper High School for the 4A regional quarterfinal in girls soccer between Canyon Lake and Davenport. Talk about a lot of offense. Davenport has outscored his last five opponents 30 to nothing. Emily Shabbat gets some space, places the ball perfectly into the corner. It's 1-0. Two minutes later, a free kick from Riley Reisdorf. Got a deflection off the goalkeeper. Emily Shabbat is there again. That goes for another goal. Francis Vega Serrano would add three goals. Davenport moving on five to two. This game was incredibly special to me. I am so, so, so excited to be a part of this team. I love every single one of them. And I have never been more excited to play in my life, honestly. I think we're very motivated to know, like, we deserve to be here. And all of us are willing to put in the work, give 110%. Like, I think we all want it equally as bad. And we're willing to put in the work to get there. I Davenport's going to play Cal Allen in the regional semifinals coming up on Friday. So good luck to them. That's a lot of goals for soccer. Oh, yeah. Don't normally see that many. Yeah, that's exciting. Good for them. All right, the bands are warming up. The 2024 Battle of Flowers Parade is coming up. How participants are reacting as they prepare to have their part in the parade they've grown up watching. We're going to get outside with TransGuide right now. You're looking at an overturned 18-wheeler. That's at I-35 in Flores, but that's on I-10 East at 35 North, that ramp right there. You can see the camera shaking a little bit, but off on that ramp, you see there's an 18-wheeler. It's on its side. Looks like there's some emergency crews behind it. Uh, this is on the opposite side of the highway from the fine silver curve that we often talk about where this kind of thing often happens. We don't usually see it on that side. And meantime, this is the opposite angle, I-10 at the Y, and the traffic is starting to pile up here. Uh, people, uh, it looks as though they've blocked off two lanes of traffic, uh, trying to make sure that people don't get on this curve. Once again, we don't know anything about injuries, but we did see a couple of ambulances there, and obviously a lot of uh, first responder crews on site. But once again, an overturned 18-wheeler. There you see it right there. So you are going to have a major traffic back up before this is all over so just know going in i-10 east to 35 north that ramp right there good news is if you are stuck in the traffic jam trying to get around this thing you can roll your windows down it's actually very pleasant outside it is and one thing to remember there there was one lane getting by there on the ramp but once they bring in the record of bring that truck up right they're gonna have to close the whole thing so yeah uh, you're just going to want to avoid that altogether. But you're right uh, it is beautiful out there we have uh, clear skies it is nice we'll be up around 80 today 77 in Houston, 70 in Amarillo. It's a good day statewide. Uh, we'll see clear skies all across Texas this afternoon. Uh, another gorgeous day. We, you don't even find any clouds. So we're on the backside of that big storm system that brought us severe weather just a couple nights ago. And now here it is, big pinwheel of a system. A couple things to point out. We've got severe weather ongoing across parts of central Florida. And then another uh, tornado watch box near the nation's capital, which is uh, going to produce... Uh, there's going to be severe weather there around Washington, D.C. and Baltimore and some snow up in the Great Lakes. So it makes us thankful we've got this kind of weather. 78 at 3 o'clock, 80 this afternoon, 78 at 7 p.m. And look for low 70s this evening. It'll be another chilly start coming up tomorrow before things warm up over the weekend. Another look at that forecast for you here in just a couple minutes.
Thank you, Justin. The strongest earthquake in a quarter century rocked Taiwan. It measured 7.4. Nine people are now dead. Dozens still trapped in their quarries. The quake sent some people scrambling out of the windows of damaged buildings. A tsunami warning was triggered, but it was later lifted. The quake was centered off the coast, just over 90 miles from the capital of Taipei. People rushed to safety as tiles fell from older buildings. Meanwhile, schools evacuated their students to sports fields. 934 so far reported injured. Egyptian state media saying the bodies of the six foreign aid workers killed in a series of Israeli airstrikes are on their way to their home countries. The three British citizens, a Polish citizen, an Australian and a Canadian American dual national had been working for the World Central Kitchen, an international charity. Their Palestinian driver was also killed in the strikes. They were distributing food that had been brought into Gaza through a newly established maritime corridor late Monday when Israeli airstrikes mistakenly targeted their three vehicles and killed everyone inside. Israel has acknowledged this was a mistake and it has now launched an investigation. The Food and Drug Administration facing a lawsuit after missing its own deadline to take action to ban menthol cigarettes. The suit was filed by a coalition of civil rights and medical organizations. The FDA had said the issue was a top priority when it sent the final ruling banning menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars to the White House for its approval in October. But the regulatory deadline was moved to March after lobbying from various stakeholder groups. Neither the FDA nor the White House had an immediate comment on the lawsuit. The Food and Drug Administration signing off on the first prescription digital treatment for depression. It's a smartphone app for people who get a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. Rejoin will be prescription only. It will not treat depression all by itself, but rather be used in conjunction with medications. The six-week program may stimulate the areas of the brain thought to be responsible for antidepressant effects. It will consist of a series of brain training exercises. But more research is needed, and these findings are just preliminary. Therefore, it's still unclear if most insurance companies are going to be covering the cost of this treatment. The prescription app will become available later this year. Microsoft committed a cascade of avoidable errors that allowed Chinese hackers to breach the tech giant's network and later email accounts of senior U.S. officials. Remember, this happened last year. All that information, according to a U.S. government-backed review of the incident, the report says the hack was preventable and should have not happened. The panel faults Microsoft, saying its security was not adequate. The report says that allowed the hackers to remotely sign into their targets Outlook accounts by forging credentials. The hackers downloaded about 60,000 emails from the State Department alone. Microsoft says it will review the board's recommendations and that it's already working to improve security. Next month, 23 million low-income households could lose a subsidy that provides for their Internet service. The Affordable Connectivity Program is expected to run out of funding at the end of the month. According to the Federal Communications Commission, those enrolled in this program will keep getting the subsidy through April, though. Starting in May, then, Internet companies will have the option to offer partial discounts using any remaining federal funding. The subsidy gives households up to $75 off internet bills every month. And while there is some bipartisan support to continue the subsidies, lawmakers have not passed an extension. Severe weather hitting parts of the Midwest, South, East Coast with damaging winds and some tornadoes. In just the last 48 hours, there have been 20 reported tornadoes in states nine of them from Texas to Ohio, and that's left behind a path of destruction. ABC's Rena Royer reports thousands of homes and businesses are without power in multiple states. Powerful storms ripping across the country. More than 300 damaging storm reports from Texas to Georgia. In Conyers, outside of Atlanta, torrential rain and powerful winds. And in West Virginia. No repair can fix that. It's totally gone. In the city of Dunbar, a car crushed after a billboard came crashing down. At least 20 tornadoes reported in nine states. 
a confirmed EF1 tornado tearing through Nelson County, Kentucky, ripping the roof from this building and leaving down trees in its wake. The roof of this house also torn off, crashing into a home across the street. Top of the roof blew in and took out the dining room and then took out the upstairs room. A student at the University of Kentucky knocked off their feet by severe winds of at least 60 miles per hour. The governor issuing a state of emergency across the state. In Jeffersonville, Indiana, at least 10 people injured. Everybody's sightings, roofs are gone, there's insulation all over the floor. My son's friend's house gone and a tornado basically went through his roof. Uh, went from one side to the other. Drone footage capturing the magnitude of damage in Williamson County, Illinois. Roofs ripped off, some buildings gutted. Floodwaters in Ohio sinking vehicles. There was also widespread flash flooding from Missouri to Pennsylvania, some areas getting more than four inches of rain. Today, flood watches issued from Washington, D.C. to here in New York City. High winds also expected. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. All right, we're trying to make sure you're equipped for the eclipse. We have got eclipse glasses. We're giving them away. It is today. It starts at 5 o'clock. It's going to happen at the Melrose store on Southwest Military. The line, again, it starts at 5. The handout begins at 630. And there's one more giveaway before the eclipse, and that one's going to happen tomorrow. But this one's on Southwest Military at the store. Let's see. Melrose. Melrose. Sorry. All right. So if you don't want to brave the crowds, you don't want to get out in that possible heavy traffic and you want to drive to the hill country, you can enjoy all the excitement right from your own home or maybe your office. Maybe they won't let you off that day. You got to watch it from your office. All you have to do is get on your phone or you can get on your other ways of bringing in your social media It's a two hour special featuring all of our meteorologists, as well as some of our SA Live friends, Fiona and Jen, and are going to be part of the fun. That's right. And uh, David and I are going to be there as well. You can join us on the rooftop live on KSAT 12 from noon to 2. This is happening on Monday. We're going to be kind of steering the ship because y'all are going to be all over. So we're just going to like listen in and talk to y'all and see what y'all are talking about. Gonna, in yeah, different just areas. pop so. in and, and, yeah, yeah. and listen in on your conversations. Yeah, we're going to be talking a lot uh, and it, we're going to have different live streams that you can follow. So it'll be pretty awesome. Hey, we want to take you back outside with live cam. Uh, they're uh, getting on the 35 northbound from I-10. That is a, a truck that has flipped over there and they have blocked traffic now on that ramp. So let me show you real quick on the map where this is, uh, right near downtown. So if you're coming into downtown and trying to get on 35, uh, it is blocked now. So now you're gonna have to take uh, 10, continue on 10 as a detour, but this is gonna really stop things up downtown. So if you can just avoid fine silver curve area in general, uh, you may want to because uh, it's gonna be backed up for a while. Almanac, 72 so far today, 45 the low this morning, 97 and 31s are the record. We're talking eclipse weather again when we come back. Poor Justin Horn, he's getting no sleep at all. He's got a skunk in his backyard, <laughs> keeping him awake at night. No, trying to, not trying to get ready for the eclipse. No, I was I was just telling them my uh, my poor dog. She had her first oh, she encounter got, with a skunk. She Didn't got skunked, so huh? Well. She smells a little bit better now, but it uh, <laughs> took some time. It happens. It does. It's uh, all of us. Yes. Oh, uh, we <laughs> had to open some windows, you know, but uh, thankfully it was a good morning for it because it was it was nice and chilly. It was a great morning. In fact, 45 uh, here in San Antonio this morning, 46 in Seguin, 45, Bernie Stage 37 in Kerrville this morning. That is uh, that's good for April. A great start, but we have a lot of dry air, so that means temperatures have raced upwards and uh, they are a long distance from those numbers you see there. We are now in the 70s and we'll make our way to close to 80 this afternoon. I want to take you around the country really quick because we've got still a dynamic system off to our east. You'll notice there is no cloud cover across Texas. But severe weather now starting to take shape in Virginia and northern parts of North Carolina. This is going to be a bit of an outbreak. I think some good storms here sweeping just south of the nation's capital. You got rain up across New York and then you get back to Chicago. Heavy snow falling in Chicago right now, Milwaukee, Green Bay. It's cold enough on the back side of this system for that. So this is one of those classic spring systems that gives you a little bit of everything. But we are on the back side of it. 
and that's giving us some really good weather today. 72, as I said, westerly winds at 9 miles per hour. Humidity is all the way down at 26%. Forecast 78 at 3 o'clock will be up around 80 as I said and then down into the low 70s tonight at 8 o'clock if you have evening plans uh, evening outdoor sports it is all good but it will get pretty chilly once we get towards say midnight down to 60 and eventually into the 50s and 40s. Where do we stand rainfall wise? We always need more rain around here but we're at 8.62 not bad shape. Uh, we're still two inches above average uh, but it would be nice if we can consistently get some rain in here and well, not on eclipse day, but uh, we could consistently get some shots of rain over the next seven days. That would be great. Uh, I do think we have a chance coming uh, on Saturday into Sunday night. It's with this area of low pressure here. Now, this is the jet stream that we're looking at. You get a dip in the jet stream out west, and this is going to be another fairly dynamic spring like system. It's far to the north, though, for us, geographically speaking, and that helps to push a front through. Uh, and that will kick off some showers and maybe a storm or two late Saturday night. And this is 7 a.m. Sunday. So that's the time frame. I don't think this is really going to interrupt your weekend plans, quite honestly, because it will be during the overnight hours and probably just before sunrise on Sunday. And then the rain scoots east. The question will be, what happens with this front? So this is going to be a dividing line between pretty dry air and pretty moist air. As long as we're in the dry air, that helps to kind of eliminate some cloud cover. Not all of it, because we're still going to get some high clouds streaming through. But as we head towards the eclipse day, and this is Monday at 1 o'clock, there's the path. Yes, we will have high clouds, but the question will be, will we have low clouds on top of that that further obstruct our view? And I would tell you that there are still questions about that. Uh, we are calling for a 60% chance that it's partially blocked. We're feeling more and more confident that yes it, there will for sure be clouds and it will still get dark and if there's some breaks in the clouds you'll still have some visibility of the eclipse now if those low clouds move in and we're just completely socked in which is a possibility it's not a guarantee though uh, then it will still get dark it just you won't see perhaps as much as you would normally see still a cool event nonetheless okay uh, obviously we're not in control of this but uh, that's the situation right now. We'll continue to keep you updated. Things can change, and they could change for the better. 85 Thursday, 84 Friday, 77 Saturday, some morning drizzle. Chance of some showers and storms, as we said, Saturday night and Sunday. And there is a chance of rain on Monday, but I think it holds off until late in the day. And then we could see some storms coming up on Tuesday. We'll be right back. Fiesta is still more than two weeks away, but work has already started on one of the biggest events, the Battle of Flowers. John Paul Barajas got an inside look at how local bands are getting ready. The floats are almost ready, and the bands are already warming up for the 2024 Battle of Flowers Parade. I was absolutely amazed. They did a wonderful job with this, and uh, it looks amazing. Students from 10 San Antonio area high schools are rehearsing for their big moment. I just feel grateful to be in this spot and be able to be on a float, and I just think it's something that it's extremely special, like I said, and I feel blessed to be here. For many of those participating, this is the chance to have a part in a parade they've grown up watching. You know, it's our holiday. We really made it our own, and we celebrate in a big way, and I think that's awesome. This year's theme for the public school float section is Celebrations in San Antonio we love, from Fiesta, of course, to New Year's Eve and Dia de los Muertos, just to name a few. Catherine Bishop with the Battle of Flowers Association says this is an opportunity they want everyone to have. Every four years they rotate in so that hopefully all their bands, all their cheerleaders, all their spirit groups and student council can participate at least for one year while they're in high school. That's why the 2024 parade will feature 10 schools instead of the usual nine. Bishop explains as the city grows, so does the parade. What should people expect from Battle of Flowers? Uh, I mean, they should expect a show from us. <laughs> and we sure hope to get one. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Santa's going to be at Fiesta. Can't wait. I'll tell you what, those, <laughs> I would love to see the high school kids participate. Love to see them walking down the street, playing their instruments and on their floats. Man, that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, yep. We're getting ready for Fiesta, yeah, guys. Can't wait. I agree. And oh, by the way, I know you're a little disappointed uh, at 1215 because we didn't talk about food. Now we're talking about food. Uh, now yes. we are. Oh, yes. How about the taste of the medical center? Kind of a fiesta appetizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Javier Barone is here. One of the restaurants is going to be featured. And you've just got some of the classic dishes, right? We do. We have one of the stars of fiesta, which is the chicken on a stick. Of course. Some other oh, stars. Oh, 
Oh, oh, yeah. 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 How about checking out Rock and Roll Coffee? That's where our Java Gen goes. And we have got some more delicious food here. Delicious Filipino food. Yes, Kabayan Cucina is here with a taste of the islands. And wait till you see the dish we are making. It is a kind of fusion of flavors from two different regions. Right, Arnel? Yes, yes sir. All right, and looking for a new home or just kind of want to look around at new homes? Uh, the Parade of Homes is this weekend and next weekend. Dozens and dozens of them. We are going to have a little bit of oh, a preview. Yes, and you can tour your dream home. Oh, my goodness. And the hottest color of the year? Yes, it makes Peach? you... A little, little bit peachy. Are we getting peachy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a, Geor a Georgia peach? Something like that. Anyway, we'll talk about that and a whole lot more. More food if I get it back from these guys. I don't know. <laughs> when SA Live continues. <laughs>